Hey there, this is Nate Portner, and I'm coming to you from ZBrush Workshops. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about posing inside of ZBrush. So, inside of ZBrush, if we're talking about posing, generally speaking, we're talking about one of two things. We're either talking about using posing with Z-Sphere rigs, oop, my weird E, or posing with masking. All right, today we're going to be talking about masking. So, there are a few different ways that we can... Uh, use masking to pose. Um, the first that we'll talk about is using the transpose line. So if I hold down control and I draw my transpose line, you'll see I get a mask. And I can then use this mask, you know, say I want to invert that and we can use the rotation and bend our leg. Right? The issue with using transpose uh, the transpose line to for your masking is that it has a bit of a fall off. So uh, let's say for instance I want to isolate the arm. Uh, I can't start down from the foot over here and hope to get anywhere close to being able to do the arm. You'll see that I have this fall off here, right? So you always want to start kind of close to where close to the body part that you want to isolate. Obviously, starting from the foot to isolate the arm is a little bit. Uh, is a little bit exaggerated, but um, there have been plenty of times where I'll see people trying to, let's say, isolate the hand, and they'll start from the chest. Um, and, you know, that can sometimes, that'll cause you problems as well, you know, even if, I, even if I get closer. You see, I can't really quite get down to the wrist. So you always want to be in, you always want to be mindful of that fall off uh, for masking with the transpose line. So what I would do is I would even start kind of, whoops, dropped out of my transpose one. Uh, I would start here kind of close, much closer. You can get kind of something nice on the wrist there. You know, and then you have your, your hand isolated. Or you could just go from the other way, right, and say, start from the palm of the hand, and then just go up to the wrist, like this. And then I'll just invert my mask. And then I have that selection there. All right, so that's one way. That's using your transpose line. Um, now, as a word of caution, as uh, general caution, whenever you're using masking, uh, it happens with the transpose line and with all the other methods that I'm going to show you, sometimes you'll have sort of rogue pieces of geometry, you know, especially if, if you have your selection kind of uh, up in here, you might have rogue pieces of geometry sort of um, still unmasked that you may end up sort of moving around unintentionally. So. Uh, be always be mindful of that it's always a pain in the butt to have to go back after you've done your whole pose and suddenly you realize oh crap I've got this you know a few pieces of geometry on his back or something that uh, got transposed with his arm and now I have to go back and re-sculpt on top of it or I have to redo my pose um, so you may run into some issues with that so always be careful all right so that is the transpose line Let's talk about your other ways to do masking. So, of course, there's the mask brush. Uh, we have the mask pen here. You can mask out doing that way, right? Um, this can be very useful if you're trying to transpose, uh, you know, maybe I'm the fingers or something like that. Um, a lot of times what I will do is I'll come into, whoops, I'll come into our mask and we'll do mask lasso instead, right? So now it's just a different mask, masking brush. So then we can come in and we can have a little bit, I like having a little bit more control. This is why I kind of, I, I prefer using the masking brushes, in particular the mask lasso brush, over using the transpose um, for the most part because I feel like it gives me a little bit more control. Uh, I can really kind of get in there and hone sort of that edge, right? This edge right here. So I can make sure I get exactly the line that I want there, right? So that's that. Um, another thing that you'll see people do um, is if and this is especially when you're when you're not working from a base mesh, um, if you build out an entire character on you know 
Dynamesh, right? And suddenly you have to go in and you have to, uh, you have, everything is all one big polygroup, right? So like this guy is, is already separated out nicely for us. But let's just pretend here that he wasn't. All right, so let's just pretend he starts off as, as one group and now, you know, that's it. A nice thing, one nice thing for posing is using polygroups in conjunction with your masking to pose your character. So what I might do is I might come in here and say, all right, I want this, I want each and every individual finger to be its own polygroup. Let's come in. Oops. Let's come in and just we'll mask this off here, right? We'll say that, and that's pretty close, right? So now I'm going to Control W. That's going to mask that, or it's going to polygroup the masked area, and we'll go in here. And now. Now I want to get this selection to be exact, right? I want this edge loop to be perfect. So what we'll do, Control Shift X to grow our selection. And then let's just, we'll come in and refine using our select rectangle. And actually, rather than doing that, I want to use my select lasso. And we'll just be cutting some of these guys out here. All right. Grab like that. We've got a bunch of stuff on this other side that we didn't grab. So let's just go get that. We'll grab this edge loop too. All right. Now you can already tell just by how long this is taking me that this takes a longer. Right. But the benefit is that it gives us more precision. Right. I have a pretty clean area here. And it's very precise. All right? So we'll just control W this again to make it a one full polygroup. All right? And now I have a polygroup that's pretty good there. All right? And so now if I want, I can go in, I can just grab this willy-nilly later on, you know, if if let's say I need to um, redo the pose that I have for my hand. I already have my polygroup set up. So I can just come back in, mask them real quick, you know, and then there it is. Maybe I want to soften my mask a few times just to make sure it's a kind of a soft, soft transpose, you know, oops, invert my mask, you know, and I want to pose them. And I already have my polygroups all set up, right? Which is also nice if I'm going to reuse this mesh for later. So those are the main ways that you're going to be using masking to kind of set up your posing.